I want to talk briefly about a subject which means quite a bit to me as somebody who is currently producing art and who is also anti-fascist. Because this particular subject concerns both of those things, and it also concerns the general sorts of repetitions, rhyming, that history is doing right now with historical fascism and Nazism in particular, that took root, probably in a very similar way, around a very similar time, like a hundred years ago. And, and history, you know, has a way of repeating when people don't learn from it. And it bothers me that it appears that people are completely unwilling to learn from history. Especially so-called libertarians and anarchists, who were really just right-wing bigots this whole time, and are now participating in this very same cultural suppression that the Nazis started out with. And along very fucking similar lines. So, let's start with a little history lesson here uh, about something called the, uh, the, the Reich Chamber of Culture and how these people were directly responsible for controlling the culture of Germany during the Nazi Empire. And uh, these people were specifically for the sort of other hand of propaganda, the sort of violent and, you know, authoritarian oppression of certain types of expression and those who express them um, for the general purposes of stopping things that are, in their words, negroid or Jewish. I am watching it happen again. I'm watching the same sorts of things happen again. So let's get into this. Reich Chamber of Culture, uh, Reichskulturkammer, was a government agency in Nazi Germany. It was established by law on 22nd September 1933 in the course of the Gleichschaltung process at the instigation of Reich Minister Joseph Goebbels as a professional organization of all German creative artists. Defying the competing ambitions of the German labor front under Goebbels' rival Robert Ley, it was meant to gain control over the entire cultural life in Germany, creating and promoting Aryan art consistent with Nazi ideals. Every artist had to apply for membership on presentation of an Aryan certificate. A rejected inscription de facto resulted in an occupational ban. So you couldn't be an artist legally in Nazi Germany if you were going to make art that they didn't like. And they would control everything from your films to your music, to your fine arts, to your theater, everything. Everything was controlled, and eventually, they started to form specific units of this. And these specific units of this included um, the, the degenerate music control people, where they would just call music that they didn't like because it was too much like jazz, too Jewish, or too black, um, they would ban it. You wouldn't be able to produce it. And they literally had an entire fucking, uh, like, musical control thing here. The Reich Chamber of Music. If you don't understand the parallels, I can't help you. There are now a ton of people trying to control other people's art. And they, they, they controlled the art 
based on cultural Bolshevism and degenerate art, music, all this stuff, uh, a word I'm not going to say. Um, basically, they had a music examination office and a series of other offices that were designed by nature to say that unless your art was serving the state, it wouldn't be allowed. Um, and so there, there were like literally kids and counterculture that were protesting against this, right? There were literally kids and counterculture who were still doing it anyway. But, like, let's be super clear here and say this is still dangerous. That having something like the Reich Chamber of Music or any sort of organization of people devoted to making sure art serves the interests of the state or anything else serves the interests of the state, is fascist. It's fascist, it's evil, and it should be stopped. Well, one of the things that they did was they eventually started to say, hey, you know, all of this stuff, you know, all this degenerate music and art, we're going to start blocking it. But we're also going to have a public display Hitler's favorite art exhibition, where you can go yourself and mock these people. You can go yourself and join in our mockery of these people. And we will put all this art on display, and eventually we will sell it to interested Nazis and foreign investors, many of whom were American. Fucking, this is, like, prime example of how fascists will profit off of the misery of others. Profit off of their own control. And I, I want to emphasize that for a second, the profit angle, because it'll come up later. But basically the sales would partly go to funding Nazi Germany. So Nazi Germany was getting money because they were saying, look at this terrible degenerate art. Right? Go against that. And th what they would do is they would uh, oppose anything that was remotely considered influenced by Jewishness. And they had, so, uh, like, multiple rooms, right? And these multiple rooms would be designed to enforce a very specific mentality surrounding these things. So, anything that was considered remotely close to the class they wanted to oppress, their political goals were to get these people oppressed by a way of getting everybody who was invested into the Nazi ideology on board and saying, this is why you should hate these people. Look at all of these allegedly worst examples of their art. They're, they're slow, they're somber, they're full of despair, they're evil, all this... Ah. So, I want you to think about that. And, and those of you who've been following me and subscribed for a while know what I'm about to say. There are modern people doing this. You know, there are modern people at this point demonizing minorities. Some of whom, like, you know, the, these people that are demonizing minorities, some of whom are just directly supporting people like the Daily Stormer and other sorts of Nazi and far-right people because, you know, they also don't like these minorities. And they're doing all of this for the general purpose, the grand purpose of saying, this is what happens when the commies win culture. This is what happens when you get woke. And... This resulted in mass tyranny last time. 
And the state has so many more examples of how they can fuck you, like, these days. They, they, they've got so many more examples. And it, it, it sucks to watch this go down again. They've got more tools, they've got better strategy, they've got better funding models, they've got more motile currency, they've got more debt they can leverage, they've got all these new systems and facial recognition, gate recognition, voice recognition, shot spotters that are actually just giant eavesdropping devices. <laughs> Joe Biden giving <laughs> so fucking much money to the cops. And, and the, the rise of the warrior cop, as Radley Balco uh, wrote his book about, like gradually militarizing the police. The, the SS and the Wehrmacht, they would have jizzed at this level of control. They would have fucking blown everything in their pants. So, it's worse now. They've got more control now. And while it's worse and they have more control, a hundred years later, suddenly the same game is repeating. The U.S. government is funding Nazis and so are, like, multiple, like, you know, mega corporate allies, right? All these people are like, ooh, these companies, they, they, they clearly, you know, support the LGBT, it's an agenda, blah, blah, blah. But these companies are totally fine turning around and supporting Ukraine. No matter how many Nazis are in their army. No matter how many times the New York Times has to say, Hey, yeah, these are Nazi symbols on these people's uniforms, but don't wig guys, they're fine. You know. And I, I'm not even just targeting them. Because, as I put out today, I put out a threat. It's fucking D-Day like, anniversary, right? It's D-Day anniversary. And, wouldn't you know it, there are a bunch of conservatives saying, Oh, Antifa, they don't actually fight fascists. You know who fought fascists? Those people on D-Day. They know who, who, what's up. But, those of you who've been following me for a while now, know what I'm about to say. The Nazis never lost. Never. The Nazis didn't lose because losing implies that they didn't escape, that they didn't get out with a lot of their profits and with a lot of, like, support from the West so that they could fight Russia. So, maybe... There's something to um, the idea that fascism never really lost. And if it didn't, then we're just looking down the barrel of this now. And no wonder the fascists have still such strong cultural support that Michael Knowles of the Daily Wire can go up and say that trans people should be eradicated. And get a rousing applause from the Conservative Political Action Committee. I wonder what kind of political action these conservatives want. Oh yeah, to eradicate. So, I posted this thread. I said, hey, D-Day is 79 years old. Unfriendly reminder that a lot of your favorite businesses and politicians were connected to or actively supporting the Nazis, and that the U.S. government through the CIA, NATO, and NASA help a lot of them escape scot-free. Antifa bat or something. And I also po posted this thing here, where <laughs> I said, for instance, the Bush family would have been tried at Nuremberg if it was at all a reasonable trial designed to actually hold Nazis and Nazi enablers accountable. Instead, that family was in Skull and Bones and got two presidents and a CIA director. That's true. And so, when Bush was over here saying that, you know, oh, he, he just Freudian slip fucking, 
like made a mistake, a big oopsie. In contrast, Russian elections are rigged. Political opponents are imprisoned or otherwise eliminated from participating in the electoral process. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. <laughs> Iraq, too. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 75. Uh, by saying, like, you know, <laughs> the invasion of Iraq was unjustified, they used the same fascist techniques that the Nazi did uh, for, you know, the opposition of Middle Easterners. For their torture. For their cultural control. For their religious persecution. For so fucking much. It was like a test run. And they funded them to be a fucking gin with. Operation Cyclone, guys, Taliban, get $53 million right before 9-11. That's a terrible coincidence. Not like the U.S. government uh, did something and 9-11 was the result, you know? Or not like the U.S. government needed to enable the governments that they would then be able to invade the countries of. No. That's the reason two planes went into... <laughs> went into two buildings and three buildings went down in the same way because debris hit it ignore the explosions in the sub basement ignore all the facts and evidence and the fact that you know the planes were burning hot enough to you know melt two buildings down and a third one that uh they didn't even hit but they weren't uh hot enough to burn the passports so that the passports could be used to blame middle easterners Ignore the fact that Bin Laden, who they blamed immediately, was running a camping coast by the CIA funding. Right? So, they've been able to do this for a while. They've been able to prove that, like, enough, not all of them, but enough Americans will support their support of tyrannical authoritarian right-wingism and their oppression of minorities as long as that coincides with, you know, freedom rhetoric, for the kids rhetoric, defend the country rhetoric, anti-commie rhetoric, 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 rhetoric. The same kinds of rhetoric that would happen in Nazi Germany. The same kinds of rhetoric that were used to control art and every other aspect of culture in Nazi Germany. So, <laughs> you know, I continued, and I posted threads where I've already gone over this. Y'all can just click into these if you want. And I said, while we're at it, we can also go over all the programs that the U.S. government and NATO used in order to basically launder Nazis into modern opposition to Rus Russia and communism, including Ukrainian nationalists, ever since the 60s. We can, can't we? And I <laughs> I went over this thing, you know? Bundeswehr. Um, Ex-Nazis in NATO. Galen Org. CIA ex-Nazis. MKUltra. There are more Nazis. There were Nazi scientists in MKUltra. The more you know. Aerodynamic. Ukrainian nationalists. Paperclip. NASA and more. Azov C-14 rights sector and more with U.S. funds and training. And now armament and all this other thing and international support. And you're allowed to praise them on Facebook. Don't dare praise Alex Jones, though. That'd be bad. <laughs> it's all so absurd. Um, and I said, while y'all were, were yelling at Kanye West for his indeed anti-Semitic remarks and calling him a Nazi, everyone forgot that Adidas is literally a Nazi company that used to make war materials for Adolf Hitler. Sweep that under the, uh, under the rug, y'all, right? And I said, Adidas' name is literally Nazi. It's Adi and Rudi Dassler. Adidas founders, members of the Nazi party. They helped Hitler by turning their fac factories into munitions plants. Kanye West may be a Nazi, but if they got Yee Yeezy coming out their ears, give them to charity, you Nazis. Because they were wondering, what do we do with all these Yeezys now that we've disavowed him? <laughs> so, and then I said, 
be sure to ignore all of the official U.S. government and allied affiliated efforts in the vein of trying to get ex-Nazis on America's side, as long as they were going against Russia. It's not like these are facts you can simply look up. Don't do that. I said Werner von Braun was a Nazi. He was the NASA engineer responsible for Apollo. Reinhard Galen was a Nazi. He helped CIA anti-communist efforts. So did Emil Augsburg, a final solution architect. More through Operation Paperclip. Think U.S. defeated the Nazis? April Fools. <laughs> and I said, so while a bunch of Americans pretend that the U.S. was really against Hitler, they promise. Remember that the U.S. is currently helping Ukrainian Nazis and agitating a nuclear power in the process, with whom the U.S. is not officially at war. D-Day, though! And I went over that both Democrats and Republicans serve fascists. That's why, historically, no matter how much they decry the Holocaust, they keep forcing far-right regimes, including actual Nazis. From NATO Bundeswehr, Paperclip, and Galen Org to C-14 and Azov, they're happy to repeat history. And all these things are threads, like with, with few exceptions. You can just go to these threads and find all the information. Look it up. I'm right, and I've been right. But the reason I'm bringing all this up is because, yeah, it's D-Day. It's a good day to think about the kind of culture the U.S. allegedly fought against. And maybe the fact that that culture might be getting roots in modern American politics. And maybe, if we're going to talk about D-Day, or World War II, or any of these other things, we should be intellectually consistent and not allow that same type of fascism to take fucking root. Even if it means lashing out at LGBT people. Which, let's be clear, a lot of that is just latent anti-Semitism anyway, because a lot of those people are totally fine with degenerative art. And hey, so the fuck am I? You try to touch my rock music? You try to touch my jazz, my blues? You try to touch my rap? You try to touch anything I fucking like over this shit? Hell, Sonic! Tons of degenerative art in those games. Art that would have been banned in Nazi Germany. You touch anything I like in this regard. You try to ban anything I like in this regard. You try to hurt my LGBT friends because they're not doing what you want in this regard. You try to eradicate people from public life. You earn exactly what you fucking deserve. And I mean that with everything in my fucking being. Because I am sick of seeing this sort of thing just brushed under the rug. And waiting for fascism to really take strong ass motherfucking root again. Watching as history repeats itself. Just like it did last time. It's happening again! I got told today I've got demonic energy, and I'm all too fucking happy to have it if demonic energy means opposing the same kinds of demons that fostered the root of fucking Nazi Germany and fascist Italy and all these other evil empires that operate in a similar culturally controlling way. Authoritarian right-wing regimes that crush opposition. Because you have to control culture in these operations, occupations, authoritarian regimes, if you want to control the people. Because politics is downstream from culture. So if you can use people's culture as a justification for controlling them, then you can control enough of the culture that you can control the rest of the people as well. Because the people that aren't being controlled are on board. Because those people are on the winning side of the history that is written by victors. Pardon me if I fucking object! I'm going to continue objecting. I'm going to continue opposing lies and bigotry and alarmism and all of this garbage! 
And I'm not going to stop. I barely made rent this month. It was a close call. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop arguing so much on social media. And I'm simply going to start making content on these motherfuckers. They are on motherfucking notice. I am Antifa. I am anti-fascist. And I am proud to be anti-fascist because fuck fascism. Fascism is the reason CBDC is coming up. Fascism is the reason mega corporate control has such power. Fascism is the reason that over the past hundred years, except one tiny little, like, sp like spit up, they've been, like, slowly accepting more and more Nazi traditions and slowly pulling more and more Nazis. Fascism is the reason all of this gets to work. The reason culture has to be so closely tied, tied with politics. The reason all of this happens is fascism. And I will oppose this fascism. The World Economic Forum, they're not communists, they're fascists. The globalists are not communists, they're fascists. It all comes from a rich tradition of fascism. Which is why NATO, even at its inception, was all about opposing communism by hiring Nazis. Because the established order is much more friendly with fascism than they want you to think they are. By consistently saying, we beat the Nazis, we beat fascism. Fuck no you didn't, you hired them. And I will fire them, just like you were supposed to. Anyone who's with me can like, share, and subscribe, and get all the more reason to smash the fucking state.